Let's immediately go back live now to the Gaza border with our Emily Rose. With our Middle East correspondent, Emily Rose. Let's go now to our Middle East correspondent, Emily Rose. Behind me, you can see plumes of black smoke emanating into the air. You can't miss it as we pulled up here. It coated the sky. In full, this rocket was 107 millimeters in diameter. Right now, we are in B'nai B'raq, which was considered the epicenter of this crisis just a few weeks ago. Earlier, we saw that the protesters were actually being told to disperse by the police who were using a megaphone to try to tell these protesters to move aside and they didn't listen they didn't go home as they were told to do so now you can see they've just made this human chain and i'll show you a little bit about what's happening behind me here they've lined up they're stopping these people from moving from going any further the memory is looking a little more boisterous than what we saw earlier in the evening moments ago these protesters had stayed on the sidewalks on the sidelines but now you can see they've come out into the streets they're crowding the streets now and they're going on a march we're going to go a little bit with them and see what's going on here snowbed in arabic means pine that's after the pine trees that you see around me that's what makes this place so beautiful so what just happened here at era's crossing is an ambulance exchange this ambulance over here was full it brought a family that was receiving treatment in a hospital in jerusalem they're now going back into the gaza strip it's a mixed city with mixed opinions. Here at the Jerusalem municipality, officials told us that they hope to see a change in East Jerusalem, and that's why they're building Silicon Wadi. But when we spoke to residents in Wadi Jaws, they say that change isn't welcome. There was lots of confusion right after that siren. We were right in the middle of it as it happened. Lots of confusion about what to do during it, but almost moments later, the crowd picked back up. Some of them started singing, dancing. They gathered what they had, and they continued walking walking towards the old city and made their way here to Jaffa Gate. And now we're going to continue with them pretty soon towards the Western Wall. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but I'm actually standing in a bar. And the idea tonight is shots for shots. I went to go report from that very narrow passageway that we see over and over again in the footage, which I'll just remind our viewers, is so narrow, it's so hard to imagine hundreds of thousands of people walking through that narrow passageway. But narrow it is. And when I went to go report from there, there were still medics on the scene trying to deal with the aftermath, the trauma. What do you say to that when you hear that the municipality is saying, we're really trying to improve life for residents? I-24 News obtains special permission to film inside, accompanied by a guide. Uh, Just behind me to my left is a section for vulnerable women who have undergone trauma in their countries of origin. He's best known for his leading role of the Arabic language rock band, Apo and the Apostles. But Apo Sahagian's ambitions go even further. He's taking ancient Armenian folk songs and making them modern. I'll move aside so our cameraman Oren can take you to the scene that's manifesting behind me. This time around, we saw the campaign kind of switch gears and try to pick up votes from the Jewish sector as well. We saw that in the last round as well as this round. Do you think that goal was met in terms of the achievements of the joint list? Adam Cassis, Latrun's head winemaker, gave us an inside look into how each of these products is made. Israelis are beginning to open up trade with the United Arab Emirates, but some Palestinian companies have been doing this for years. Suhail Taljia founded this marble company, Jerusalem Stone Group, just outside of Bethlehem, which exports to countries all over the world, and mainly the Gulf. 2006, we moved uh, more toward uh, the Emirates, Saudi Arabia. He even custom-built this home for the Qatari foreign minister, all from locally sourced marble and this college in the United Arab Emirates. Palestinians call this marble white gold. They say it's coveted because it's a cut above the rest. So the quality of the Palestinian stone is much, much higher. And the market, you know, have a great request for it. Especially if if you're working with the high-end projects, the Palestinian stone is, is the key. As of now, this product needs to be trucked to Jordan and then go by land to either Saudi Arabia or the Red Sea port of Aqaba. But a new deal between Israel and the UAE to normalize ties might expedite this process. Be honest with you, yes. Yes, I think, you know, with uh, this uh, opening up lines, direct lines from Majdod to to the Emirates, uh, if the price is right and if it's less than uh, the cost uh, that we do it by land, yes, that will help too. And Palestinian marble companies face harsh competition on the global market. Turkish and Chinese companies sell lower quality products at a much cheaper price and a larger industrial scale. 
First of all, the running cost here is very high. Electricity is very high. Taxes is very high. Workers, the workmanship, it's, 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 it's very high. And Israeli security restrictions make the cost even higher. We need to leave uh, inside the container, when stuff in the container, we need to leave a space of 40 centimeters so the dog can go in and uh, do the security check. Now, I do understand the security check, but the rest of the world, they don't check with dogs. They have technology to check with it. This 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters, it's almost one third of the space. Najib Nasser is the CEO of Al Anun Arts of Crafts and Stone. He isn't sure this deal will have a positive impact on his business. But we don't know in the future really what happened. Is it this uh, normalization or peace between the Gulf, some of you of the Gulf uh, states and Israel will help the Palestinian uh, actually economy and cause or it would be vice versa. Marble companies market their products at trade shows in the Gulf, like these, where they gather new clients. And direct flights to the Gulf may make it simpler to travel, but still, these Palestinian craftsmen face hardships for permits and movement. The restriction actually came from a freedom of movement. Like, if I want to go to the States, I've been trying to go to the States for the last two, three months. It's really almost impossible. So while this white gold may be in high demand, easy access for these companies is more than a stone's throw away.